Hey, it's the Market Sniper. Valentine's Day. Me love you long time. Thank you so much for all your support and your likes and subscribes. We're going to talk about the gold trade uh, that we put on short and why we did that uh, two days ago. Uh, we're going to have a look at some of the fundamentals. This is, I suppose, it's part of helping everybody, hopefully, to become a better trader. Our framing, our thinking, and how and why um, we tend to do things. So, a couple of important points I really want to talk about, um, about structure of a trade that everybody needs to hear. So, inside of everything being technically determined, so where do you enter? Stop, take profit, are you fully closing, are you partially closing? Uh, all those aspects are determined technically for me. Uh, an HVF method. In other words, the footprints in the sand are the tracking. They will show where the edge of the cliff is and where the sinking sand is, etc, etc, etc. Those are imperative. The trade is determined by the technicals and exactly what goes on uh, on that front. Then we have biases, often like a fundamental bias, for example, and that is very useful for understanding the system. That comes from many, many years acting in the market. Uh, as I say, it's about 35 years now, um, watching, trying to understand things like expectations and how things roll generally in terms of the market. Macro bias, learning about economics and the systems and everything about that. That all uh, comes a lot from experience, um, but also an interest in economics and the business side. So if you have all those interests, it's worth putting it in. And eventually, as I say, you develop this understanding of the system. So. What am I going to show you? A couple of key points about fundamental role in terms of technical. Because actually, this trade was triggered, 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 triggered. It was triggered, wait for it, by a uh, fundamental event. And this is where we say the technical and the fundamental work together and are one of the same things. So you had the CPI data come in and it was very high. In short, it was flagging bullish. And the question for many people would be, well, why did you say that the day before that on balance of probability? Did you just get lucky? It was a guess. To a degree, you're always lucky in markets when you're right, uh, but you also get to bias a tiny bit and add to your possibility of being lucky. You will still uh, be incorrect often, uh, and sometimes you'll be still be shocked. And we're going to talk about where we were shocked. One of them was what happened even before. That was live trading day, which you can attend with us. That was 2nd of February on the non-farm payrolls. So what happened on non-farm payrolls? Well, the key thing that I wanted to show uh, you in all of this, let's turn to the images above, uh, is the macro framing that you have with, uh, with an understanding of where we're at. And my macro framing is entirely it's a debt-based crisis that you are in. You are busy watching people pansy around about when they're going to let the debt-based crisis absolutely crash and take place. So there's a lot of shenanigans around that. Uh, and that is our macro framing. It isn't everybody else's. We are in a too much debt-based crisis. So my overall bias has been, fundamentally speaking, on an economic level, not a technical level, although it's been supported by the technical level. Remember March 2020, we said to you, that's it for the bond market. That was the all-time high for the bond markets. The 40-year bull is over. People are now going to start asking questions, and you're never going to get to the same level level of upside uh, on the bond market and this is a trend change and turn to the downside. So with that said, um, let's talk about uh, the next point. There's an over expectation by banks and institutions that the rates are going to go down. Some were pricing up to seven cuts, seven cuts. Some were a whole bunch more. It was 69% odds, virtually 70% that the next meeting is going to lead to a cost that's now been halved half the odds of that. It's gone from 69 to 32. It's gone from literally uh, seven tenths to one third. Um, that's a heck of a change in the space of, wait for it, one day. But hold on, we say to you that non-farm payroll sets the tone. Non-farm payroll sets the tone, which is why we do the live trading day on the release of that data so that you can come and attend and see what it means. Because often you get new inflections 
for a market. New pivots in a different direction that take tangent at that inflection point. Boom! And that's where it happens. And what did we say? Well, we felt the market's a lot weaker and everything, and we were unders. Wrong, 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 wrong. We got these amazing numbers on non-farm payroll. So I'm going to flick between these two charts now. Amazing numbers. So these are two sets of day-to-days. This is quite a busy chart, by the way. These are two sets of day-to-days. February the 2nd goes from there to there, right? And that was non-farm payrolls. And I was like, the truth of the matter is, I think things are pretty bad uh, and they're underselling it. But how big is the lie? You get, you know, uh, lies, damn lies and statistics and that we know they can control whatever they want to have come out of the, uh, the non-farm payroll with the birth death numbers and everything. Let's see what they do. And in actual fact, they said average hourly earnings 0.6 instead of a forecast of 0.3. They also manage the expectations down so that they can over de deliver. So I keep telling you just being able to jump over 10 centimeters would mean I'm an exceptional athlete. And then I jump over a meter and you think, wow, wow, what a stud. Um, so I'm managing the expectations expectations really down and then I'm uh, clearly hurdling the event. That's part of the game of institutional analysts uh, and equity expectations but there's a bit of that that goes on with the statists in the Federal Reserve. The number was expected 187 came 353. The unemployment was expected at 3.8 percent came in under which is green for bullish when you have less unemployment, more jobs, and higher earnings. This is, wow, everything is awesome. This is the everything is awesome economy. I got it all wrong. It's everything is awesome. Sit with your coffee like a dog and watch the fire burn around you. So that is the everything earth, uh, awesome non-farm payroll. So what did we say in the other um, slide that I just wrote some footnotes down? The, the, the non-farm payroll event is often a data framing for that month and the direction and the trend. They don't always come in and contradict themselves. That's very, it's more uncommon. Uh, it's fairly rare. So typically, if you're getting a line of data that is coming at you, they tend to self-confirm. There can be some variance. It doesn't mean it's not a universal rule. You can't get to, it's like continuation on general basis. Something that is rolling will continue to roll uh, unless an equal or opposite uh, and opposite force or greater force is placed to bear on it. Otherwise, it's going to continue. Now, friction is obviously a force in our world, so it'll slow down, but in space, it'll keep rolling. So what did we get? Um, we got the NFP sets the data tone. We're looking here. NFP sets the data tone. Get it right. Uh, and trend. Uh, and that was and everything is awesome. So our bias suddenly was thinking, hang on a minute. We took a couple of small little early longs and I sometimes just ping on a market before it's the main event for it to happen. A, I don't want to miss the trade. B, I want to check whether it's doing what I expect. So small entries with tight stops on possible structural setups that got run to the downside. That's a loss uh, out, but very small and it's pinging. Okay, so those levels that I thought would stand weren't standing. We'll deal more with that when we get to the technical side. Uh, we're actually talking about the narrative and the numbers. So, um, the gold expectation of upside continuation wasn't uh, doing so brilliantly. So we start opening it up. Could we be wrong here? Then we look at the, the non-farm payroll number that came in on the Friday on the live trading day. And we start seeing that there was a CPI number for yesterday, the day before Valentine's Day. And my expectation suddenly becomes, hang on a minute. Actually, this is more likely to confirm what we've already seen set as a tone for NFP, that is, uh, everything is awesome. So they're going to live the lie until suddenly the debt matters. In short, it's all about uh, the economy is actually growing. And by the way, this has been confirmed with lots of twittering out of central bank heads. The ECB, the Bank of England, uh, and of course the Federal Reserve quite often saying people are over expecting rate cuts. Why? I know why the real reason is it's bond valuations and the debt uh, absolute binge that is coming. Again, I draw for you the seesaw like that. And if you have rates go down where this is R, if you have rates go down, valuations must go up. Simple as. Now, I suddenly ask where there's going to be an absolute smashing pipe this big of new debt. And I use the pink crocs and all of these silly examples as metaphors. But who's buying all this stuff? 
If they not, then you're going to end up having to be the only buyer. It's not the international community. China isn't adding to its bonds. It's losing money on its existing holdings and it's buying gold. Russia isn't buying uh, treasuries. The last 300 billion they had got stolen because they bad, apparently. So it's moralistic now as well. Um, so there's no real trust. There's no agnostic in the SWIFT system at all. So who's going to be buying the bonds? Somebody who thinks they'll never be called bad by America? Well, anyone could be called bad by America. You know, they're very expedient with their friends. They were allies once with Saddam Hussein, and then it suddenly didn't turn out so good for him. Uh, they got working again with Gaddafi, and then, you know, he got a little bit independent of thought about having his own money and, you know, a gold back dinar, and suddenly it didn't go so good for him. So all of this nonsense goes on and it's uh, it seems that uh, you know you can be on the wrong side very very quickly so who's going to be the buyer well eventually the central bank itself the federal reserve but they're not in any hurry for that to get out that the, the main bid in the market needs to be them also the degree of tightening that people envisage is happening is far less than you think for many other reasons that are beyond this particular clip um, so that's uh, part of it. So the CPI was to follow the NFP chronologically and also, more importantly for us, by narrative. Why? The cuts can't be as big as you think they are because we can't hold that market up and put a bid under it. There's less pension money going in. All the boomers are now actually taking out, not putting in. There's not the same glut going in. In fact, the pot of 2.9 trillion shrunk for the first time. So instead of just the income providing the feed, they're eating into the capital. Somebody says in 10 years time that it'll actually be completely dry, paying out what people are paying out. So they're going to have to change the age. They're going to have to reduce the, the amount you get paid. And they're going to have to get people to contribute more, raise taxes, and everyone's going to get a worse deal. Why? Because it's uh, the numbers are wrong. You've gone from 16 workers supporting one pensioner, and now you're at three turning into two supporting one pensioner. So I'm sorry, it just doesn't work. Somebody's going to have to pay a whole bunch more, and the people that are receiving are going to get a whole bunch less, and they're going to start getting it a whole bunch less. They're going to have to work longer, and still you're not going to make it. Which is why the killer note on why the killer note is because all that pot of great money got invested in, wait for it, treasuries. Treasuries, how treasuries doing? They're doing bad. They're going down. That's right, they're going down in value because rate go up. That goes back to when they were at 0.3% yield, they were super high value, our TLT short that we gave you with a head and shoulders, all those charts, etc. down, down, down in valuation. So the capital has shrunk. The capital has shrunk as well, and the inflation has climbed. So that relative yield, in terms of real yield, is not actually that attractive because when you take the interest, the inflation rate out of it, it's not actually delivering. So you're actually stuck with a main proponent that is holding up the bond market, your pension system. We've spoken about the Californian Teachers Pension Fund previously, and all of that not wanting to sell because it would cause disorderly ructions in the market, rather taking a loan against what's clearly a very illiquid item, even though it's one of the biggest markets in the world. How can it be illiquid? There's no one bidding. You're not meant to sell. It's a bit like it's a bit like a very small micro cap uh, token that is being bid up on very light volume, but you're never to sell more than uh, a few hundred because otherwise, whoosh, you realize there's just no bid stack under it at all. So that's kind of where you're at at the bond market because the scale of the holdings is so vast. And pension funds are the biggest uh, fall guys in that, along with what other investments? Um, commercial real estate. How's that doing now? Not too great either. So what you've actually got is pension problems. That's why you had the British pension crisis um, because they there was no one who was going to buy their bonds when they didn't have enough yield and they actually had to sell some of the underlying interest uh, capital uh, bonds. Nobody was wanting to buy them. And they don't want to chase the rag down because they would devalue all the bonds they already hold. They'll ruin the mark to market. They'll be declared insolvent by the actuary. So we can't sell lower. Everyone's sticking to the lie until they are forced sellers. That's what happens. So we're in, in our, my opinion, what we are in is a debt-based crisis back to point one. And you actually need capital preservation 
return of capital, not return on capital, which is where the debt market is. So gold has been framed instead of the capital preservation over here in black that I know it truly holds in an in collapsing market, which is why everybody refers to it as an insurance policy against the failure of the financial system. And now is never a better time, by the way. Look at our pure gold link, American Friends deliver to you on your door. Don't be put off because you're not uh, speaking to an American. You'll have it delivered to your door. Um, and beautifully, lovely, lovely stuff. Silver, coins, bars, and you name it, all in there. Anyway, go click the link. Um, so capital preservation error is our time. And the inverse, uh, what it's being treated like at the moment, gold, and this is the success of the framing of the narrative, is that gold is now an inversely correlated interest rate uh, mover. So interest rate go down, good for gold. Interest rate go up, not good for gold because it doesn't pay any yield or interest, as Warren Buffett so much like to say. Well, we don't care. This is not a search for yield environment. But they're trying to keep you thinking on the, uh, the yield element. It's a capital preservation tool. In an ever collapsing dark star into a black hole, you will still own your one kilo of gold, your 10 kilos of silver that you hold in your hands. Um, so that's the, key, that's the key thing. So with the expectation that rates will not go down as much, because we've just had two brilliant statistics, everything is awesome stats, what actually happens is, we're not going down as much. That's a bit like an increase in expectation of rates. Therefore, gold bad. Therefore, bad for gold. So we had a fundamental trigger on a technical setup. We'll be talking about the technicals very shortly. In fact, why don't we do it? Let's go over to the chart and why we did uh, the trade uh, so that you can see this. Do not forget this valuation. They don't want to be the bid on something that is toxic underneath the valuation of the debt markets. They don't want to do it. The fulcrum is there. For rates to go down, that has to go up. That's why they continue and keep warning you that it's not going to go down quite as much or anywhere near like you expect. Okay, so I'm going to keep reminding you of that diagram. In the meantime, let's go back to this. So what we actually had was the tone being set by NFP. There's your three green arrows, all awesome. So our expectation that we shared in the tweet over here when the market was approaching was actually, I don't want to be. So let's just go to our community feed. You can see it over there. Um, I'm reverting bear on gold. So posted the gold sign. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Reverting bear on gold. Uh, in the leaders format, reverting bear on gold and then shared the draw with a possible triggering event. That chart clicked on. We'll open it up uh, like this. Actually, it won't. That's the video that I did next. That will show you, hey, we need to think of this as a uh, first setup in a new trend rather than the, how we were framing it. Again, wrong on gold, because we were thinking continuation. You'd recently made new highs. So at that point, it's all about bull. But there was one thing that was slightly challenging about that that was in the back of my mind that saw us ready to be flipped. Flippability, that uh, being flippant, uh, <laughs> it's not the right same thing, by the way, but I uh, can't help the, the narrative. So you have to have some dexterity with opinion. My must be prepared to change your opinion. So both our view of bad numbers for non-farm and continuation for gold were both incorrect to start. So what you then do is you get something that resets you and say, you're off here. Oh, everything we're going, the everything is awesome game. Okay, that means CPI might come in strong. That's going to have an effect on gold. Maybe we need to be biasing to the downside. Then we have another look technically. We have another look technically, and I covered that. Um, and you can see the short testing longs were stopped out. US CPI tomorrow expecting a meet or beat now. So we're going to either meet the numbers or come in overs on them. We beat all three of them um, on the CPI. So that link takes the community to uh, a custom video update, which you can see yours truly discussing. My thoughts on it. I think this is, this is a poor performance on gold. That was, remember the great rejection. This was huge. So I go in and I start talking about the great rejection, which I'll uh, talk about in a minute now with you on the technical side. So all the way through, this is the difference, by the way, when you're in the community, far more detailed coverage and far earlier. 
By the time I'm sharing something on Twitter, you get a thought, you get your 200 characters or whatever they allow you, you might get a chart and that's great and you can get it help it, but you're getting it late and you're not getting the detail. You're not getting the stop, you're not getting the entry, you're not getting how we'll play it, uh, and you're not getting the detail with the breakdown in a narrative, you're not getting the opportunity to even comment and uh, discuss it further. But that's the value of uh, the people that uh, are giving of their energy. So that was that, and that was the video. Let's go back to that chart because I want to make the key points. The one thing that had worried me is this was a huge rejection. I was going to play trade continuation, but experience has shown me when you get a massive rejection like that, it's often a seminal moment for a possible trend end. So that's kind of like a blow off. In that one candle, this was a four hour chart, by the way. If we take the one candle there, you can see it. It actually traded right up to there. Now, if you follow that all the way through, you're around 2,150. 2,150 and the lows of that candle was somewhere around 2,070. So essentially you got a $130 candle. Now that's a vast, vast uh, candle. That's about uh, six, six and a half percent if gold's around 2,000 to get that, that level and a 200 would be uh, 10%. So at about 130, you know, you're talking about six and a half percent in a single four hour candle, by the way. So by the time you're looking at the daily candle, which was down there, um, started over there, you're probably starting down at something around 2040. You're actually getting over um, to, uh, to 150, you're getting about $110. Uh, I'm sorry, I said 130, we were at 70, it wasn't 130. Uh, it's 70 from 150, it would have been about $70, so it's not quite the same. But if you take the daily candle, as I'm illustrating from around 2000 and, yeah, 2035, all the way up to 2150, that's 120, that's about a 6.5% for the day, not for the four hours, so I just correct my maths there. So anyway, so this is the, the tweet which we pushed out somewhat cryptically to a couple of Goldie friends um, over there, but unpopular take, we have a lot of Goldie followers and sound money followers, but it's going to be unpopular to say that gold to get smashed to the low 1900s and possibly beyond on a strong CPI data tomorrow. So it could be, you know, you could look at that and say he just guessed right. Uh, and we did. It is a game of guessing. But the balance of probabilities, understanding our framing, that we're less likely to get contradicted when the Fed and the central bankers are very keen to get a clear message out. And the message is, you're not getting the amount of cuts you're going to get. And we know the reason. They don't say the real reason, but they're saying the economy is awesome as the reason. Uh, they're not saying, we can't buy all these bonds, man. They've got to devalue. We've got to allow a devaluation. Who's going to buy them? We'll be left being the one buying them. We don't want to buy them. Um, we can't buy all of them to get those rates down. It ain't going to happen. The market will take over and they'll dump them. And, they'll, and then who's going to buy them? And then everyone will panic. And then we'll have to, you know, we're going to pick up pieces here. So this extreme rejection never had a particularly large follow through. When I first saw how large it was there, I was actually expecting a run into the 1890s, maybe even the mid 1800s, but certainly to the low 1900s. We just got a technical uh, break of the 2K here, very, very low. You didn't go much below 1980 and boom, you ended up coming back fairly strong on the blue line here. So what was that saying to me? Okay, well, we're either more bullish or this is um, really proud bulls, because don't forget, we'd recently made new highs, late bulls charging in. And you can see the momentum from the low to the high and a very similar descent of gradient. But then the second attempt, the second impulse, so this was our first impulse, this is number two, was very grinding. And we're seeing lots of weak, slow grinding behavior taking a very long time and then slam most of the way back in a very short time. So you see that? That's momentum. How fast did you come down versus how quick you were able to go up? So this is starting to look like the bid is thinning. The bid is thinning and you're getting air pockets and you're dropping and trying to get out is kind of hard. So, um, that was not impressive. And then you can see the squeeze from our first top, our second top, and our third actually got more acute. You just didn't get very high. And we have what we call a very flat bottom structure. 
flat bottom structure. And then we remind you of this very important part, let's grab the pen, that is called the 2K mark. Draw it freehand, the 2K mark, key level of significance. So what tends to happen when you need to break a level to go up, you first technically run it for a short bit, you pull back beneath it, you wind up, you wind up, and then you smash through it. That's on the upside. You get much the same thing on the downside. You're coming down, you get a major rejection, no more, blow off. You technically run the level that's been support for a bit, but you get a strong rally because everyone goes buying gold at a, with a 19 instead of a 20 in front. That's just a deal that has to be taken. Late bulls, you get your strong rally and then they puffed out. They puffed out. They puffed out. They puffed out. They came very lightly up under the, bull, the price and they weren't able to do much, especially near the end. We're getting to the business point and CPI is coming and it's coming at this point right here. You can see the spinning tops, very low vol. Why? Data coming. We call that funneling. Technically, you get that when you're in our funnel. And that's the volatility squeeze. And this can happen on unannounced fundamental events. This was a known and expected one. But sometimes you get price behavior where a CEO is about to be fired or some fraud is about to be discovered or something and or something positive uh, and we get this funneling. No one's allowed to buy in the shares. It's all quiet. There's earnings about to come out. That's a known event. You can get unknown and known events. I'm starting to sound like Rumsfeld. Oh dear, oh dear. But anyway, you get a little attempt to shake out with a rally there. Then the data comes out slam. And now you're trading down. CPI numbers in confirming that everything is awesome economy as per the needed narrative message by the central banking cartel that aren't wanting to talk about an utter debt crisis, an absolute proliferation of ongoing continuing debt with major expenses well beyond the tax take, and on the one hand, that are actually wanting that inflation to bring about the end of the economy so that they can introduce their reset, new tokenization, CBDC surveillance finance, new order, which is where they're at. And how do we know they're doing this? Because on the one hand, they say to the consumers when they're central bankers, and we're winning the war on bringing down inflation. And then all the other politicians that aren't involved with the financial department go out, we must war with Russia. We must war with Russia. We don't have enough soldiers. We must war with Russia. So what do you think war with Russia does? A, to the oil price. B, to uh, inflation. Well, it's funny how the left hand keeps fighting against what the right hand's doing. They're just not cooperating so nicely, are they, for this whole inflation story? Well, maybe it's because it's exactly how it's meant to be. And they want their chosen Messiah to show up right now because it's time for the CBDC. There's too much freedom out there. Okay, before we get to reset, let's go back to the technicals. So what ended up happening is HVF method is your news before the news uh, skill set and gold futures fall towards the critical support of 2000 an ounce after the inflation report. Well, of course, they actually fell through the 2K and are now on the downside. We have a target of 1914 and because it's the first setup in a new potential trend, this could actually overperform further. So that was why we went short on the gold trade. Now, if you're following us on the market cyber, the market cyber, the market cyber, yes, that would be him, CMT, Chartered Market Technician, but more importantly, the founder of HVF Method, which will take you so much further than the general technical burble that you get taught in traditional technical courses, plus an MBA. Oh, it sounds like a lot of letters. They're all acronyms. They don't mean too much. It's what's upstairs and how you apply it, uh, and you here with me. So follow us on the market sniper if you want to find out more, more similar things. What do we expect to have happen? Well, you've learned something about data. You should already now be thinking, What's the next major data event, which could be further confirming of the everything is awesome and a stream of thick, fat, awesome data? Well, you can go and have a look at what's coming on Thursday. That could be the point. We might rally a little bit. So the trade will go against us for a bit on Wednesday, da -da 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 -da, a little bit of a rally. You get to Thursday. This is tomorrow, the 15th. We are Wednesday today. You will see USD. I've filtered out only the reds. The reds are the big guys and only the USD news. And you will see this is another day of quite heavy data. 
another day of quite heavy data. So continuation on the theme of the data says we think maybe it continues to go pretty well. Now they might for want of suspicion not want to make it look all too brilliant. So one or two could be flat uh, to expectations. One might even be contrary. But on the whole, I'm going to suggest that core retail sales will be an important number and that you'll meet or beat 0.2. I'm going to say retail sales that aren't core, which is set at minus 0.2, which conveniently gave you a flat naught. They don't want those negative numbers to, for the whole course. That, rather than being minus 0.2, may in fact be minus 0.1 or maybe even flat on its own. Unemployment claims where they're expecting 219, you may get a number below that. That would be three green arrows again. Three green arrows to the upside. Everything is awesome. That helps the Fed not have to buy their own debt by virtue of not issuing rate cuts. So everything is about the rate cuts that are meant to be coming. We, how many times have we told you about this whole story was all formed about the pivot and you heard all your influencers talking about the pivot and when the pivot and when the pivot and it's all about the pivot. It's about the goddamn debt. There's too much of it. Nobody wants to buy it. You can't push the values higher. They've got to go lower. That actually leads to an interest rate spike at some point in, the, in lieu of a crisis of a financial nature. Yes, and that could possibly happen while you're being distracted uh, somewhere else on a global war, for example, which happens to be pushing inflation up at the same time and the price of oil uh, and making Russia, the enemy, quite a lot richer, actually. Uh, so, you know, it, it all makes brilliant sense. Now, can you see it with me? Yes, I think you can. It's an uh, absolute, uh, absolute mess uh, and it's designed to be so. It's not incompetence. Don't feel intellectually superior. It's a very dangerous trap. These people don't know what they're doing. How could they do it? Everyone can see. No, no, no. It's meant to be destruction. It is an appetite for destruction. Remember that album? Yes, sir. They have an appetite for destruction. That's exactly what they intend to do. That's where they're taking you. You can learn to trade it with HVF Method and us. And by the way, nobody's made any money yet. So before we get, we don't mean to sound in any way chipper that the, the data went on one particular call in our way. Nothing has seen any gains yet. We need at least the 1914 to happen. So we can go to the charts now live and see exactly how it's going. That is how it's going at the moment. And I would suggest possibly the next day it goes well for us. You could get rallies back up to the 2K and just through it. Remember key level of significance, just run and actually through it. And that could be an invitation for late shorts who want to get in not suggesting a trade. Hey, I talk my own book, not telling anybody else. We are non-advisory, but that could be a suggestion of a subsequent Thursday sell-off that could run you uh, lower to the downside here. Frustrating time for investors. Hey, I'm a long-term investor. I'm holding. I don't care. It's just more cheap to buy. If I can profit trading and turn it into more investment in silver and gold, I'm going to be as happy as a uh, clam. And that is how we read uh, the markets. It's a five, by the way, five to one uh, risk reward trade, but we would keep at least 25% open for possible more bonus money to the downside. Why do we make that decision? Click the first link below, book a call if you want to find out how to trade HVF Method with us and our amazing uh, members in our community. Also, don't forget, invest in the gold. It's getting cheaper and it's go. you could probably, by the time you're ready, you could be picking up uh, gold a bit cheaper and silver too. We'll do a full update on gold, silver, and the gold exchange rate, uh, the gold silver ratio, I mean, uh, and many other things, uh, including the yen and yen equities, which continue to delight uh, in a later video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the other side. Bye for now.